Uh, hello guys, uh, I think I'm live actually. So uh, thank you very much uh, for having me uh, today. It's a uh, great uh, honor, uh, you know, to, to be invited to, to talk about my journey with you guys uh, in which I think you're gonna face some uh, uh, inspirational uh, thought uh, that is going to help you, I don't know, in your future endeavors or maybe in your life. Uh, I'm very happy. I'm very thankful. Uh, my name is uh, Hassan Rengu Fouakie. I was born Hassan Rengu Fouakie. Uh, I'm ambassador, so that's why I add to my name Ambassador Hassan Rengu Fouakie. Uh, I'm a Cameroonian a citizen, and uh, I am based in uh, Cyprus. Uh, well, uh, I am a global citizen. I love saying that, and I'm a youth activist. Uh, I am the founder of uh, the World Youth Summit NPC, as well as uh, the founder of the Association of African Future Leaders. Uh, these are two um, non-profit organizations uh, based in South Africa, uh, specialized in uh, youth empowerment, youth leadership, uh, youth and women leadership. And uh, we set our goals in our organization, uh, which are related with the uh, sustainable development goal of the United Nations, Agenda 2030. Uh, the latest one was uh, my nomination as the Minister of Youth at the State of, uh, the State of African Diaspora. And I'm also working with uh, some international uh, organizations such as uh, FAF, uh, the Federation for the, uh, uh, the Federal Association of the Advancement of Visible Minorities. At, um, and the international uh, local government. So uh, this is me, and uh, I'm uh, young just like you who are watching me. And uh, I would like to to tell you about a bit about my story, uh, how uh, I made it so far, uh, so that at least who, you who think that maybe it's not possible, you can't achieve it. Uh, you should start erasing that thought from your mind. Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, I was born in a uh, in a family in a polygamous system. My father uh, got two wives. My mom was the first, and my mom uh, gave birth to nine. And uh, unfortunately, one passed away. Uh, so we are eight in our family. We are all intellectuals. Uh, th thank you to my dad who took care. Uh, of our education, who made sure that we should acquire quality education out there. Uh, in Africa, when you are born in a polygamous system, where the husband or the father has two, two wives or three or even four, it is a challenge for you as a single person. It's a challenge for you to, to, to showcase uh, what, you've, you have, what you have got. It is a challenge for you even to have an opportunity uh, the opportunity to excel because we, you, uh, the man is going to, your father is going to have a lot of children. It means a lot of responsibilities. But in our home, it was a kind of exception uh, because uh, my father took care of our education with my mom. And uh, they made sure that all of us, uh, we should be well educated uh, so that in the future we shouldn't, uh, I don't know, we, should be, we shouldn't be stranded or maybe uh, fin financially incapable. Uh, so uh, my childhood uh, wasn't that easy, but it was very interesting because I was that child who always loved to <clears throat> uh, love to discover, you know, love to, 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 to go for discovery, to, to, to always, uh, I was always curious, not just the kind of curious and sit down and think about maybe it's something that can, that you think in your head that can happen. But I was that type of curious that want to know directly. So I was like, going to the thing that I want to know and I discover it. So uh, my childhood was very interesting. Um, then when I got to high school, I started involving myself into uh, a, anything concerning leadership. I remember the first time I took a position of leadership was a delegate of the class. So we are having a delegate for classroom. So uh, you had to campaign for that position. You have to get up and speak to your people that they have to vote you to be on that position. And being a delegate in a high school those days, I'm talking about 2004, 2005, it wasn't really easy. So um, that is how I started. 
I love always to, to, to be speaking to people. I love always to be in the position of leadership since from my high school. So um, I got my admission to one of the greatest high school, technical high school. It's a vocational school, uh, Lycée Technique de Bafsam, Canada. So I was admitted there and I was one of the youngest uh, students there because uh, those days uh, people were doing technical school. There were people who were already aged. So I was like only, uh, I think, uh, uh, 17 years old. And in my classroom, I was having people who were like 30 years old, 32. And uh, really, it was so frustrating. But I, I tried to adapt myself to that. So um, I involved myself into the cooperative. They were calling an organization leading the, 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 all the students cooperative. So I became the president of the cooperative in uh, 2009. And uh, really, uh, it was very interesting, like leading the whole college, you know, deciding for them, organizing KMS, organizing event for them, you know, entertaining them. It wasn't really easy. And also managing funds was part of it. And uh, I, uh, I, I was the, the president of the cooperative of that high school. Uh, then uh, I got this opportunity to uh, come abroad, to travel abroad to continue with my studies. And uh, thanks to my late mom, uh, may she rest in peace, uh, thanks to my dad too. So when I got to Cyprus, it was not what our agent uh, um, told us that it was going to be. Like it was something different. Uh, I didn't even uh, imagine that the country is go was going to be like that. Like uh, they promised us that as students, we were going to maybe uh, find a job uh, easily, uh, be working and sustaining ourselves during our studies. But it was totally uh, different. So I had to adapt myself again uh, to fight on my own. Uh, six months later, as I travel abroad, I lost my sister. And uh, another month uh, after her loss, I lost my, uh, my mom. So this period of my life was in 2014. Uh, it was very, very hard. Uh, it was hard because uh, she, uh, my mom was also backing me up financially. So I, I, I was now left alone in a polygamous system where my dad also needs to take care of other children who are back home. So I had to find my way. Really, I dropped from school for two years because I couldn't afford it. I had to fight on my own. I, I had to, to, I don't know, to do some, some little jobs like everyone, you know, to, to, to get the little comfort that I needed so that I can follow, uh, I don't know, my dream. My dream was always to, 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 to be successful, to, uh, to get my degree. I was studying electrical engineering and my father always invested in that. Let me get my diploma, my degree and go back to Cameroon, my country and, and study and uh, work there and have a good salary. Uh, then uh, during this hard time, these two years that I dropped from school, I understood that I have a dream and uh, this dream is to empower young people. Let them copy also from my story and uh, let them also do whatever their heart, their heart desire, you, do, you know, whatever they really wish to do in their life. So I called my dad someday. I told him that, uh, dad, listen, uh, you always wanted me to be an electrical engineer. But uh, truly speaking, uh, this will be like accomplishing your own dream, not mine. You are electrical engineer and for sure you want me to be so that I can maybe come back and work in your company or something like that. But this is not really what I want to do. But I will study that electrical engineering for you, for your happiness, but I will follow my heart and do what really I want to do. And he asked me, what do you want to do? I said, I, I want to be that person who lead. I want to be that person who speak for those who can't speak. I want to be that person who help those who are really helpless. Uh, he said, that, do you know that it is uh, a journey which, uh, which requires a lot of effort, a lot of uh, engagement, a lot of commitment, and a lot of courage? I told him that, yeah, I think I'm ready. After everything that I went through in life uh, till date, I think I'm really ready to take this journey. He said, okay, son, uh, you go for it. Uh, but I don't know how you're going to start, but I just wish you uh, good luck and I bless you. So this is how I started involving myself into research. I started using the benefit of internet to look everything, that to, to read from everywhere, to read every book, to check everything, all the news, every latest. I started checking. In 2016, I uh, met a, a guy who was uh, also from my country, but li was living in Cyprus. 
I have to mention this because it's part of my story. Uh, so I met him. He was traveling for conferences, for MUM conferences. Well, uh, I won't mention his name. So I was like, wow, elder brother, uh, can you tell me about this conference things? Because I really love it, the way you involve yourself, the way you open your connection and your network to people from abroad who are not from your country. It's really amazing. I really want to exchange that, that, that kind of relationship with other people around the world. He told me, okay, I, I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to teach you about it. You know, it's MUN. It's so difficult. You need to really learn. And really, uh, it was so, um, I felt intimidated because uh, that time I, I wasn't speaking English this well, you know, though it's not perfect, but I wasn't even speaking this well. I was speaking only one language, French, and my own uh, maternal language. So I was blocked. I was stuck. Because you know, to do MUN uh, 2016, it was not like n n it was not that like now that you can have MUN where people can speak Spanish and other language Arabic. It was in English because English is the official language uh, and the one the first one in in the United Nation. So I had to improve my English. So I registered in the school. I started improve my English speaking skills. You know, uh, uh, pushing it, trying to speak. Though I was making a lot of mistakes, the people I used to live with my neighbors, they used to laugh at me when I make any mistake in English. Uh, so maybe when I say uh, I go market, and normally I'm supposed to say I'm going to the market. So they will laugh at me and then I will ask them what is the, the, the right thing to say. They will tell me and I will keep it directly in my mind. So that, 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 that is how I improve my English. And I was living in a community where they are only speaking Turkish. So I also push in learning Turkish language. This is how I learned the two languages uh, uh, directly. And uh, you, you know, I, I compile the two and I start, any, any, every time I learn something in English, I wanna compare it with uh, the translation in Turkish so that I can learn and, uh, and get it at once. So this is how I learned two languages. Then I start, I said, okay, I won't keep waiting for this guy to come and tell me uh, what the MUN is about. Let me go and check on myself. I have internet. Why? I can check everything is on the internet. So I check this thing. I check uh, the MUN. I've learned it's a modern United Nation. It is a conference, sometimes two to three days. And the students are simulating the Council of the United Nation. They are uh, improving their diplomatic skills. They are representing countries. Uh, so it was really interesting. I said, let me go into it. But before I go into it and before I apply, I need to really get a lot of knowledge. So I got that knowledge, I got that knowledge, I got that knowledge till 2018, where I met, uh, my, where I, I, I made my first uh, step. And this first step is the step to the greatness. So oh, it was not that easy step. Those who really participated in that chapter of my life understand that I really went through a lot. I really crossed that step like a giant to, 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 to reach and achieve my goal. So I was, I was selected to a MUN, an international MUN. I'm grateful to them. I was selected to, to, to this MUN called International MUN uh, as a chair. So truly speaking, I always, I've never uh, attended to any conference, any MUN as even a delegate, but I was selected as a chair, a director of a committee, a whole committee with more than 50 people. Really, uh, I, I, I will tell you this, my, like my heart was beating so fast. I was like, Asan, you're gonna do it. You're gonna make it. You're strong. You're gonna. It's it's nothing, but it was something because you know, uh, leading an MUN as a as a share, an international MUN, you really need experience. You really need to to have participated in a lot of MUNs. But me, my simulation was home simulations. I've never attended any international uh, simulations. So I travel. I had to travel to Thailand. So I was to share uh, the United Nations environmental program and I was the co-chair. Uh, so when I reached in Turkey, I had a very terrible incident. I lost my purse. So as I lost my purse, uh, really there was no way uh, to, to, to go forward. Like I, I needed to continue that journey. You know, people were waiting for me the next day for the conference and I was, I, I was in Turkey. Well, my flight ticket was already bought, but I had nothing with me. I said, Asan, will you go back to, to North Cyprus and just uh, excuse yourself and just said you are really sorry that uh, you couldn't participate because you have this incident? Or will you really continue this journey to Thailand? The conference was supposed to be in Bangkok. 
So I call uh, Mr. Fawad, who is my brother. I call him. Uh, the, the, uh, that, that time he was the Secretary General of that conference. I told him, listen, brother, uh, this is what I'm going through. What can I do? He told me that, listen, uh, every step that you take, we are going to uh, support you. If you come to Thailand, we are going to manage. If you go back, then we will understand you couldn't make it. So I uh, decided to take the giant step. And uh, I traveled to Thailand. I arrived in Thailand with nothing with me, like not even one penny. But I believe that this is my call and I need to go for it. So I reached at, uh, in Thailand at the airport. They came to pick me. Thank you to Mr. Munish, uh, if he's watching this video. Uh, really, the, the, the conference was amazing. I met new people. I met wonderful people. Agita Pasaribu, uh, Aniel, Fawad, Munish, uh, 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 Shifa, a lot of great guys. You know, these wonderful people who have already been doing in the MUN world, in the real world, the world that I always wish to be part of. I was there with them, dining with them respectfully. I just wanted to learn more, to know their motivation, to know why they are doing what they are doing. So this is how I succeeded. The committee was wonderful. And at the end of the committee, the delegates were coming to me like they want some autograph from me. They want some, uh, uh, they want some messages like uh, a souvenir. It was very exciting. Like I was very thrilled. I was very happy. I was like, wow, what type of, this is an achievement. I was so happy that I made it. Now I got that inspiration that we need to come back with this type of thing in our continent, Africa, in my continent, Africa. We need to come back with this type of thing in my home, uh, in, in, in my school, in my university. Let the people know about it because even in Cyprus, I've never heard that they organize a MUN conference. They need to know. So I discussed with Mr. Fawad that day. I told him that really I want to organize this type of thing in Cyprus. And really, I will put all my energy into it. I want to see it being a successful uh, uh, conference. So he said, I will back you up, brother. We are together into this. Uh, we just need to find a very good secretary that will be working uh, uh, um, uh, restlessly uh, about this. And uh, really, it's going to be a success. I said, OK, let's go for it. Then I went back to uh, uh, Cyprus. We started planning. I made some calls. I met this guy, Mr. Sutosh Patnayak the co-founder of the uh, um, United Youth Circuit is from India. He's living in UAE. I told him that, listen, guy, this is, my, my, uh, this is what I'm having in my mind. I want something. I want to organize a summit where we can have people coming from all around the world, sitting for three days, discussing not only about uh, MUN conference. Yeah, they should simulate the MUN, but they should also discuss about issues going on around the world, like the SDG. They should start discussing about SDG, the quality education. There are many people out there that don't benefit from the quality education. What can we do for them? So uh, he, he said, okay, uh, no problem. Uh, we can go, I, I got a message, sorry. How can we cope up with the failures in the past which are now stopping us to do anything and remind us that we can achieve anything wherever I try, I fail. Well, well uh, I will answer this uh, question to you before I continue with my story. Um, you have to always believe that if you fail, you are failing because you need to learn. There is nobody who is perfect in something and fail for that thing. You understand? And there is nobody who is good at something and fail from it. If, for example, in a classroom, you are supposed to pass a test, a mathematics test, then uh, your lecturer tell you that, okay, I'm going to give you, I'm going to interg interrogate you in this one, two, three chapters. You understand? Many of our lecturers do that. Thank God for them. So uh, when they give you this chapter to go and learn, for example, this is the list of the examples of the instance. So you go and you, you read, you read, you read, you read. But you go and write the exam. And when they announce the result, you find out that your name is not among those who have succeeded. So how do you explain that? Something lack. Like there is something that went wrong they, because the lecturer cannot hate you. The, the lecturer is just there to mark the, I, I don't know, to, to, to give you the, 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 to give you the grade that you deserve according to what you wrote. So if the lecturer decide that you have to fail or you fail this course, 
you shouldn't take it as uh, the end of the world. You should instead learn that you have made some mistakes somewhere and you should try to know why. Always ask that question, why? By asking the question why, it is very easy for you to solve a problem. So if you go again on your paper and you ask why have why I fail, what really happened? You will find out your mistake. And when you find out your mistake, please take it now like your strength. Go and work on it now, double effort on it and come back stronger. For sure, when you come back, you come back with too much confidence. Let me tell you a, a chapter of my life. My, my high school wasn't that perfect. I also failed. Uh, in my high school, when I, I, got, I, I entered the technical high school, I had three years to get my DCE A-level to go to the university. Before the last year, I failed. And in that school, you don't fail. If you fail, you are, you are like they, they suck you from the school. Like you need to go and find another school because the school is very, it's a high standard school. It was built by Canadian and it's a Canadian system. So I failed. And when I failed, I realized that I was lacking some few things and I needed to work on it. Then I gave, I, I asked, I requested for another chance. And when they gave me that chance, I used all the, uh, the, all the energy, everything, all the things that I could get on my own advantage so that I can come back and bounce stronger. And I did it and I passed the next time. So we can't always expect to win or we can't always expect to, to be successful at every level. You need to pass through some failures so that you can learn a lot of things, so that you can learn. If you always succeed in your life, the day you fail, really it will be very difficult for you to, uh, uh, to, to get up, you know? Sometimes you, to, to, you, to, you need to fail. You need to sometimes even fall. When you fall one, two, three times, and when you get up, for sure there are some challenges greater waiting for you, but you will be able and you will be much strong to, uh, to, 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 to face those challenges. So I hope I answer your question. I needed to stop the story before, uh, uh, before I uh, to answer your question before I continue. Uh, so uh, then we organized our first uh, ever conference called World Youth Summit. And I'm wearing the t-shirt, you can see. That was our first logo. You can see that was the first logo of uh, World Youth Summit. We received the representative of the president of Liberia, a country. Can you imagine? And uh, many people came from, many youth came from all around the world, more than 70 countries. And they were so excited. And we gave them the best of the support in Northern Cyprus. It was so amazing. They were, the feedback was so great. And it, that was my second achievement. I was like, wow, I made it. I organized an international summit and people came and we invited uh, great speakers, uh, Ambassador uh, Elvana Shala from Kosovo, uh, the Minister of Youth from Liberia, great guys that came to boost our conference up. It was so great. Then I decided to take this dream in another level, to make it a company, to make it an organization, a non-profit organization where I will be working closely uh, 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 with the SDGs of the United Nations so that I can fulfill my own goals. And my vision was that let us have a, a, a generation of youth who are financially free and a generation of youth who are intellectually independent. This entitled quality education. That's why I've been trying, I've been doing all my best, I've been pushing, I've been making sure that wherever I go, I should try to create a positive impact in the life of the people. If I have the means to help them to acquire that quality education, then I'll be fulfilled. If I have that uh, opportunity and that means to help them find a better job, uh, uh, to help them find a better, a better job, uh, then I will be fulfilled. That's why we created and we registered the World Youth Summit NPC. For those uh, who knows uh, the World Youth Summit NPC, well, as I said in the beginning, we are, our aim is to be a global champion in delivering the quality education for the youth and the women and the employment. So, uh, guys, that is a short, uh, um, a, I don't know, a, a short chapter of my life, a brief, just for you guys to understand that, you know, before you reach a certain level in life, before you succeed or before you achieve some of your goals, you have to pass through some steps. And these steps require um, 
these steps required um, uh, a lot of courage. If you are not courageous and if you are not opportunistic and grabbing all the opportunities that you are having in your way, then you cannot make it. You cannot really, uh, you cannot really uh, uh, make it in life. And please don't consider, I'm always saying this, don't consider success as an event that you are going to celebrate someday. Maybe that, if, that event is when you are finally rich and you are having a luxurious uh, palace and you are having a lot of car, uh, a lot of cars and you are having all the, uh, uh, the, 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 I don't know, everything that you always wish to have. Don't consider it as a success. For somebody who truly is a fighter in life, a struggler, success is defined as uh, the, the accumulation of many successful achievements. So if today or if in, in this week you, 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 you are planning to achieve a goal and by the end of that week you achieve that goal, it is success. So success is this accumulation of all these uh, achievements and that is the meaning of success. Don't expect uh, success to be just something that you will work on and at the end you will have it at the end, everything. You can't have everything at the same time. You can't have everything at once. You need to have it step by step. And this step that you are having it are called achievement. And the accumulation of all these achievements are called success. So uh, I am open to any question to you guys uh, regarding uh, what I'm supposed to discuss today. So you are free to ask me uh, your question. Okay, Asan, we all have some turning points in our life that change our life. Do your life has that totally change your life methodo methodology and how you deal with it? uh yes uh, the turning point in my life was when <clears throat> i dropped from school well uh, when i dropped from school i understood that i am left alone i understood that i i am living in a foreign land when i need to be careful it's not my home i understood that there are some there is a, a, a stage in your life where you need to take decision for your for you for yourself and these decisions are very uh strategic these decisions are very crucial that if you make a mistake why making that decision then you are doomed so uh that short period the period that i lost my mom and my sister and i have to drop for school for two years these two years taught me a lot I did some kind of things that you won't even imagine that I, 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 I can be sitting here and be telling you that, yeah, I've done it, but I did it. I had to go and, and start washing cars. I was washing cars and we were earning something like 30, uh, 30 Turkish lira. And 30 Turkish lira, uh, it was something like um, in this dollar, if I convert it in, dollar nowadays, in dollars nowadays, it should be something like um, um, 30 divided. It should be something like $4. So imagine that I was washing cars to earn $4 every night, every evening. Like I go in the morning at eight o'clock, I need to wash cars. I'm not uh, ashamed to say this because this is part of my story. Uh, we should not always be painting story in pink color. We should always tell ourselves the truth so that the youth who are, really all, who are also dreaming to be like us should also learn that it's not always easy. They don't just sit some days and everything appears. So I was earning $4 every evening when I'm working from morning to evening, $4. And in this $4, I need to take care of my rent. I need to take care of my, my, my food. I need to dress up. I need to take care of my own needs. You see, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but it's because of the decision I took. Dropping from the school was a decision I took. I took that, I thought that, yeah, if I continue investing in these schools, and schooling for something that I don't really love, there is no point. There is no point for me. I want to do something that I love, but what do I need to, to do it? Like, what, what, uh, what do I really need to do what I, I, I love, that what my, my, my heart has chosen to do? I need knowledge. And how can I acquire that knowledge? Am I still obliged to acquire that knowledge passing through school? Yeah, I acquire the level that I, I could. But at that level, at that stage of my life, I needed to open myself to a new network. 
I needed to discover. I needed to make some research. I needed to read, read a lot. And after accumulating all this knowledge, I said, yeah, I am ready. I can make that step. And finally, I think I'm not accomplished, but at least I have accomplished uh, many things that I want to, I want to, I always dream to accomplish. We are having an international organization now, uh, 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 backed by uh, a great, great people who are really supporting us uh, all over. And uh, really, it's an achievement. Being the CEO and the founder of an international organization represented in 41 countries really is amazing for a young person like me. So you can do like me, but don't always think that it's easy. Don't always think that you can get it easily. You can think like, you, you can become like me. You can become CEO of two organizations and you really manage it very well without any failure. You understand? But you have to be ready to take that step. Are you ready to drop everything that you are doing now to really focus for, it, for what you really love? Like for those who follow me, I told them the last time that there is no point for me to keep working and enriching my employer why I am remaining poor. There is no need. There is no need. There is no need. I have to get up in the morning at six o'clock, rushing to go have a shower, to deal with the breakfast, to deal with family issues, then stop in the traffic and then arrive at work at nine o'clock, at uh, nine a.m., like one hour late, and then be shouted at by my boss because I'm working. There is no point, but I'm not asking you to, to stay lazy home and uh, don't work or don't do something to earn money. No, you need to do something to earn money. But at, certain, at, at some certain level, if you are a dreamer, if you are somebody who believes that you can accomplish your dream, there is a stage of your life you need to make a stop. There is a stage of your life you need to say that it is enough. I have worked a lot. I don't want to work again for someone. The little that I've learned and the little that the little that I've gained from that person, then let me use it now to build my own life. Okay, your question is uh, why to attend any MUN? Well, MUN has changed the life of many leaders. MUN wasn't just created by us; it was created far into 1945. I think even before 1945. So you understand that MUN, the aim is to build the better leadership is to build the better leaders of tomorrow at the MUN for those who have participated or those who want to participate in the future it is an opportunity for them to open themselves to a new network to make new friends it is because of my network now that uh, I, I am where I am I am grateful for that and I cannot be proud it is because of the people that I met that I'm also where I am if I never maybe met Mr. Munish, if I've never even been invited to the international MUN, I shouldn't maybe, I shouldn't have maybe gotten that involved into it. If I didn't meet maybe somebody like Mr. Asitosh, Mr. Uh, Fawad, who taught me that, no, you can push for it and we can back you up. I shouldn't make it now. So you need to understand that the MUN is an opportunity for you. The MUN is the door for you. You need to open. It's that big door that when you are open, when you have open and you are in, in the room of Munas, yeah, something's changed in you. You improve your English speaking skill. You improve your leadership skill. You improve your negotiation, how to speak in public, how to speak to people, how to have a good, uh, a good relationship with your neighbor, how to live with people, how to be a good diplomat. So the MUN teach you everything. And you need to seek for the quality MUNs because there are a lot of MUNs out there. You may have a, a very drastic or very bad experience from those, but you need to seek for the best MUNs. For example, I will you submit NPC. We don't just teach you about the MUN. We always make you take action. Take action with the real uh, issues of life, like the SDGs. You understand? So the quality of the people, the quality of the secretariat matters a lot whenever you are applying to attend an MUN. So the MUN is key for somebody who wants to become a leader, somebody who wants to work his entrepreneurship skills. You can learn it at the MUN. You can open a good network for yourself. And it can also enrich your, your CV. I hope I answer your question. So uh, do you have any question? Uh, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. What is your vision for youth of Africa? Well, uh, I want and I will never 
ever changed my vision for the youth of Africa and the whole world, but particularly those from the least less privileged area, those who are suffering in rural areas, those who are not having uh, access to internet, to electricity, those who are not having access to pure water, those who are sleeping with hunger, my vision for them is to make them intellectually independent and financially free. That is my vision. And I know that with every, every all my effort, with all the effort that I am putting and the effort that the people who are backing me up are putting, we are going to achieve. We are going to achieve that goal. And that vision is going to come true. I hope I answer your question. Okay, what motivates me? Uh, my people motivate me. I have to be truthful. If you are passing in the journey, a, a very hard journey, and when you look back, you don't see anyone that at least raised a hand and said that, yeah, Hassan, yes, Hali, yes, Mohammed, I am with you. Yes, um, uh, Richard, I am supporting you. What you are doing is good. Please keep up. If you don't have these people behind you who keep saying that, please push, where you are going is good. We are behind you. Really, you can't do anything in life. This is my own experience. Nobody should tell you that we succeeded alone. We did everything alone. Yeah, no. You always need that person. Even if it's a one single person, it can be your wife, your girlfriend, I don't know, your, your, your brother, I don't know, your sister, your father, your mom, who tells you that what you are doing, you are doing great. Please keep up. I am with you. And when you are coming out of the line, they tell you that, please, we have realized that you have come out from, your, from the true line. Please, can you come back? If you don't have this person telling you that, really, you need to think about, you need to think about your proper self. You need to work about relationship with your neighbors, with your family. You need to build a good, I don't know, a, a good life. Something is wrong somewhere. You need to have that person if you believe you are a true leader and you really want to achieve your goal. So this is what motivates me a lot. My people motivate me. I know that they are behind me. I know that why, whatever plan or whatever project I'm bringing on board, I'm bringing for them. And wherever I'm doing something wrong, they are always there to tell me that, Mr. Hassan, you did something wrong. And then I love and I thank God because I'm humble. I always say that, wow, I'm humble. I've heard what you have said. Then I will try to correct it. And when I correct it and it is great, they tell me that, yeah, you are really doing great. We are behind you. So my people motivate me a lot. So do you have uh, any questions? <clears throat> yeah, of course, you, you need to surround yourself with a, a very, very, very good inner circle. The people you are working with, as some people said, the people you are working with, define the people uh, you are going to become. You understand? The people you are having now, when you look around you, look at your type of friends. Are they the friends who are taking you only for clubbing? Are they the friends who are taking you only to go and drink? Are they the friends you are going to, to who are inviting you to only go and smoke hawker? Well, I'm not against, but I'm just saying everyone is, is uh, you know, is free to live his life. We are living in a, in, 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 a, in a freedom, you know, we have freedom of speaking, of, of eating, of dancing, of, of doing everything that we want. But if you want to be successful in life and achieve your goals, you need some kind of level of focus. And you can have this focus if you are having friends around you who are not really looking the same way like you. You understand? So you need to look around you now. Go on your friend list. Go on your phone. Who are you always calling? Go on your, uh, I don't know. Yeah, go on your friend list. Go on your, your, your phone. Yeah, like check your repertory. Who are you always talking to? Who is the person that you, that, always sh that you always share your story with? Are you higher than that person? If you are higher than that person, please try to change. Yeah, let me finish before I take this question. If you are higher in a circle of friends, if you are having a circle of friends, of maybe five friends, and you find out that you are the one, the most intelligent one, the most strongest one, please change that circle. Always look and seek for a circle where people are higher than you so that you can learn from them and excel. This is my advice to you. So please, can you ask your question again? I lost it. How do you balance your vision and personal life? How do you balance? Uh, well, uh, 
this question is a very um very tricky how do i balance my personal life with my vision i align both yeah i align both like my personal life is my vision i consider myself as the, the vision itself i consider myself like the example for the youth i consider myself for the one who is coming to deliver some people i consider myself with for the like the person who is coming to speak for those who can't speak to help who, those who really need help so that is my personal life that i'm making it okay when you mean maybe personal life like family issue relationship issues well the people who love me always understand that i have a vision and they're always willing to support me in whatever i do so that is how i find the perfect balance so do you guys uh have questions uh, don't hesitate to to ask me Uh, there is something that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, it is about um, how you present yourself to the people you seek something for. If, for example, you are running a project and maybe you want to maybe seek for sponsorship, for example, you want to maybe seek for support, you want to maybe seek for maybe donation, the way you introduce yourself and the way you show yourself to those people matters a lot. You need to understand that some people, it's true that they say, don't judge the book uh, on, on its cover. But sometimes the first impression matters a lot. Whenever you are going for somewhere, to somewhere, or maybe whenever you are maybe about to meet a partner, always make sure that the first impression is positive. Always make that, always make sure that your first impression is something that after the meeting, the, the partner will be like, wow. I make such an elegant person. Wow, I was in a meeting with such a well-spoken person. Wow, I was in, this, in the meeting with somebody who was smelling so good. Somebody who was really very literally clean. You understand? You need to have that first impression because the way you show yourself to the people, they qualify you like that. You cannot just show because you said you cannot, you, they don't judge uh, a book by its cover. You cannot just show up like that to a, 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 a partnership meeting or maybe a business meeting just like that. Like uh, your dresses are not well, uh, well put on and uh, you are wearing some kind of sandals. Maybe you are not really well dressed. You didn't even have a shower and you just show up at a meeting and you want to negotiate for a business. Or maybe you are asking for sponsorship and you think that they are, you are just going to have it like that. No. You, the way you introduce yourself and the way you show yourself to the people, that is how they respect you. Take an example. Go to a bank, for example, to make a transaction. Dress properly for on Monday. Dress very formal and go to the bank. See the way the people react to you. See the way even the security man at the gate react to you when you are coming. And the next day on Tuesday, dress just normally like you are just strolling in the house and come at the bank and see the way people react to you. So you have to very, you have to be really be very careful. We are youth, and we have the energy to do everything. So always put everything into consideration. When you are going somewhere in an office, never always forget that your opportunity can come from everywhere. So wherever you are always going somewhere, even if it is to go to just the market, make sure that you are dressing fine. Make sure that you are looking fine. It matters a lot. Because from there, you can meet someone that can change your life. You can meet someone that had a, a proposal that just wanted a, a youth like you to show or, or maybe to propose to. And then when they, when they look at you, you don't really look at somebody that can be serious. You have lost it. You understand? So the look also matter. The way you introduce and you show yourself also matter when you want to be successful in life. When you want to be, if you're an opportunistic, it means that you need to put all the advantages on your own side. <clears throat> So, guys, okay, you are neat. And thank you very much. Well, you need to believe in yourself. You need to inspire yourself before you are able to, uh, uh, you, before you are able to make other people to believe in you and before you are able to inspire others. You need to find your, your motivation in your heart. Join it with your head. Align it with your strength. And then go for it. Yeah, go for it. Don't stop. Go for it. Push it. As far as you know that it is true and it is what you really want and it is pure and you can get it legit in, uh, in the legit way and you are not scamming to get it or you are not lying to people before you get it, then go for it, okay? Go for it, don't stop. 
for sure on your way, you're going to find wonderful people who are having the same goals like you and who are going to follow you, who are going to be with you, who are going to support you. And my journey can say a lot. I met wonderful people that I have to even mention. I met uh, 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 Miss Leila Rahal. I met uh, Dr. Kumo Esile. I met a lot of great people. I met even wonderful people who are even participating in my personal life. Victoria Ludova. Uh, I met many people. Jasmine, Fawad, Asritos, great people. I Yvette, Advocate Yvette. There are so many. Mr. Paul, everyone. They are so, 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 so great. People even from many countries, from far from my own country. Mary from Iran. So great people that just say that, Asan, we believe in what you do and we really want to support you and we are behind you. Please go for it. We are supporting you. I met people that are able to even support us financially. Dr. Pavers, so many great people. And we are. I am really thankful. And it wouldn't be possible. They wouldn't even know me if I didn't go for my dream. They wouldn't even know me if I didn't align my, my heart with my head and join my strength on it to push and achieve my dream. They wouldn't even know me. So you understand that you need to be an opportunistic. You need to go with... And you have to be opportunistic, like go for what you really want. Any opportunity that comes on your way and you see that it goes with what you really want to be, it goes with what you, you really want to achieve in life, please grab it and go for it. How do you manage personal life and professional life? Yeah, I think I answered that question uh, earlier in uh, a kind of uh, a clear way, like uh, my personal life and my professional life are almost the same. When I say this, some people say that you are mad. Like, I'm always ready to work 24 hours over, over 24 and seven days over seven. Sometimes, yeah, I need break. But I just understand that as now I am a young man and I have all the full energy with me and I need to push. I need to give all my best, all my 100. Do I really need to wait when I'm 40 before I do some kind of thing? No. If I can do it now, sorry, if I can do it now and when I'm 40, I rest, then I'll be happy. I don't need to wait. You don't need to wait for any time. There is no time for something. You can go for it at any time. As far as you have energy, you can go for it. And it is what I'm doing now. So my personal life and my, uh, my, 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 and my professional life, uh, if I'm finding some deficiency on my personal life, I don't mix it with my professional life. I'm always trying to be up there. I'm always trying for my mind to be up so that it doesn't affect the people that I'm leading. How to make people inspire when everyone seems against you? Oh uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, what you should understand. Every leader have that problem. Uh, all the leaders of, sorry, my camera. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Okay, one minute, guys. Yeah, so all the leaders have a problem of uh, uh, the people jealous them, people hate them, some people envy them. This type of people, you will find your way. You will find it on your way. You understand? And you can't force them to, to be inspired. You can't force them to, to give them uh, what you have. You understand? They said, uh, in, uh, they, they say, say in my village that they said, when uh, you are teaching or when you are, um, you are advising a child not to touch the fire, and the child is very stubborn, allow the child to burn his hand, then the child will understand that, yeah, the, 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 what, the, the fire is very hot. And the next time, the, the child will, whenever he's seeing just the flame, the child will run away. So I'm just trying to, to, to make this, I'm making this anecdote to let you know that you're not obliged to force, to force people to get inspired by you. You are not obliged to deliver, to force people before you deliver a service to them. As far as you do good, the little uh, number of people, the few number of people that come to you are enough. They will spray the wall for you. I started World Youth Summit, for example, just like as, as an event, or event organizer. And we were only few of us those days, only five people that sat down to make this, that first event happen. And you understand that as it grows, those that came to attend it, those that came and find out that it was a quality something, they went and on their, proper, pro, uh, on their own network, 
and they spread the news for you. So uh, if you are struggling to inspire people who are against you, let them be. Let them be till they find out that they really need you. Let them be till they find out that what you are really trying to communicate to them is very impactful, is very insightful, is very important. They will come to you. But never forget that in this life, as a leader, as somebody, as an inspirational person, you will always find people that will jealous you, some people that will hate you, and some people that will envy you, but will never have the courage to come to you and say that, please, I want to learn something from you. Mm -hmm. Okay, how can we handle our insecurities? I can advise you to pray so much. Well, I'm not trying here to be discriminative in terms of religion. I believe that everyone has the right to, to, to believe in whatever he wants. Everyone has a, the right to have his own God. Uh, we don't judge anyone uh, from their beliefs. But I think you should attach yourself to your God. This will help you handle your insecurity. This will make you more confident. So attach yourself to your God. Always pray. Always be prayerful. Prayer is very, very important. I'm not trying here to be religious, but I'm talking in a, a, a universal manner. Try to pray every time. Push your energy. Ask God to give you more energy and more wisdom in everything that you are, uh, on all your endeavors. You will see that your insecurity will be, uh, will be dealt, uh, you know, will be dealt with. Like, it will, it will be easy for you now to, to approach your problem easily, to, to manage your, 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 I don't know, whatever plans you are having. For example, some people are very um, afraid when it comes to maybe speak to people when it comes to maybe stand in front of 10 people, five people, and discuss to them. Well, pray, but don't just limit yourself in praying. Make mistakes. Regroup those five people. Try to talk to them. Let them laugh at you. When they laugh at you, you learn. This is something that I've never understood that I went through. When I was learning Turkish and English, people were laughing at me at any stage. At every sentence that I make, people will laugh at me. And the people I was even living with, we're not helping because we were speaking a language that they call pidgin. And pidgin is a mixture of French and English. And it's some kind of a dirty way of speaking uh, 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 English. Okay, I won't say dirty. Some kind of Africans way of speaking uh, English. So uh, whenever I'm saying something in English, in pure English, they are laughing at me and they are giving me the correction in pidgin. So you see, I had to pray, but I had to still making exercises, practicing it, failing getting up, repeating, till then I understood, and till then I, uh, 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 I got it right. So pray a lot if you are having issues of insecurities uh, and practice a lot in every issue that you are having. You will see that everything will be fine. One last advice for you. Uh, after this question, we wrap up uh, the session. Okay, uh, thank you, first of all, uh, Youth International Conclave uh, for this first one. Uh, I hope I was at the uh, at the standard, the level that you wanted me to be. Uh, well, uh, I try to be uh, as much uh, natural and genuine um, as possible because it is about my life. So there is nothing I can add or there is nothing I can try to arrange uh, to make it look good. No. So I try to be genuine during this session. Uh, I didn't prepare any presentation on purpose because I think uh, if you want to inspire people, talk from your own personal experience. Yeah, I will answer your, call, your, 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 your question. So uh, what makes me uh, happy professionally? What makes me happy professionally? Uh, when I, I write a project, I submit to the people I'm working with. I gain support from them. I work for that project. I put all my energy. And at the end of the day, I have a good feedback. I'm very happy. So there's nothing that makes me so happy like that. You know, it doesn't just, uh, you don't just need to call yourself a CEO of a director of a company or maybe a program manager. You need to go for that program. You need to run that program till the end and see the positive results. Then you will understand what I'm talking about. It makes you feel very, very happy. So that's the feeling I'm, I'm feeling. Uh, uh, whenever I, I, I run a project, it goes to the end and I have a positive in, uh, uh, feedback from the people that participated to that project. I feel very accomplished. So as I was saying, uh, that my advice to the youth is that you have to be prayerful. Nothing is happening in this world 
you know, we, we have to, there are some lucky people. I can't deny that. There are lucky people in this world. But, you know, you have to be prayerful and you have to be hardworking. After being prayerful, go out there and work for it. Knock doors. Don't stay locked. If you are planning to, to meet the, 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 the president of your country, I mean the president of your country, start planning it even one year ago. Pray for it and ask God to open you the door. And then day by day, make the first step. Start by meeting the mayor. Tell the mayor you want to meet the president. The next day, meet the deputy or whosoever. The next day, meet the minister. The next day, meet the chief minister. The next day, meet the prime minister. Till you knock that door at the end and say, that, yeah, I got you. This is you and this is the goal I wanted to achieve and I did it. So my advice for you guys, we are in the world where there are a lot of uh, um, distractions. There are so much distraction. Wherever we are, it's no more like before that some things were taboo and they were doing some things in the background and maybe hiding some few things for the people not to see. But now everything is open to whoever want to see. Everything is at, is at the disposal of whoever want to touch. So please, you just need to be careful because too much distraction will kill. Too much distraction will lead you to do something, uh, will lead you to, to some kind of I don't know, to, to something that you never wish to, 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 to do or to, to you never wish to become. So please be mindful of that. Pray a lot. Be hardworking. Believe in yourself and don't just believe. After you believe, go and touch the thing. Go and touch the iron by your hand. Work for it. Nothing is gotten in this world easily. Everything you need to work for it. Everything you need to sweat before you have it. Even God said it. Everything that you got from the sweat, yeah, you are very happy of it. That's why I'm very proud. That's why I'm very happy for the successful uh, project that we have been running in our organization because it is something we sweat for it. We work days and nights to make it happen. And when it comes to happen, we are very happy and we are very fulfilled. I always thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Joy Bahati. It's, uh, it's very unfortunate that I can't see you guys but I can see your names. So thank you very much, guys. We can keep in contact at any time. You can check my personal website, uh, asanfwake.com. Uh, you can book a personal appointment with me to have a one-to-one. -one. I'm always available for my people. The youth are my people. The women are my people. I'm always available for you. Uh, whatever knowledge I have, I'm not the king of knowledge, but whatever knowledge that I can share, whatever thing I can share from my experience, I am always willing to do so. Yeah, I'm always willing to do so. So, guys, I'm open 24 uh, hour over seven seven days. Every time you want to contact me, you can just find me anywhere. You can find me on my website. You can book an appointment with me, and you can schedule a call with me. I will never deny you. I will never turn you down. We will talk. I will try to understand you. I can advise you maybe in something. I can also gain from you. We learn every day. So that's my advice, guys, and that's my last word. So thank you very much, guys, for everything. I think this is exactly a one-hour session, exactly one hour. Thank you, Youth uh, Conclave, for everything, Youth International Conclave, Mr. Umar. I thank you very much. I thank you, everyone that loves me, everyone that loves a world you submit, MPC. I thank you, guys. We are doing great because of you. We are doing great because you support us. If we didn't have motivation coming from you, we wouldn't be doing what we are doing right now. So thank you so much for everything, and we keep doing our best. Thank you.